Welcome ladies and gentlemen, so this video is gonna be a update slash game talk slash I don't know, it's kind of different because there's a lot of things I want to talk and they don't kind of fit in a full game talk video so they're gonna be here today so first part it's gonna be the update so I literally hit a dead end about the mandate video because there's nothing I search up and down and besides the site and besides one controversy about the artist being not paid for the game art and stuff like that the fucking thing is dead there's a few art codes but yeah there's nothing Literally fucking nothing. It's kind of strange to be honest. Like the game vanished. We still have the side, and I still believe they literally suck. So we're probably gonna do a video. Like I'm gonna literally cut down the fucking things that I did, and just maybe do a game talk about crowdfunding on itself. Because literally, there is a very interesting thing about crowdfunding and I want to talk and there was Star Citizen like literally there now this is about the mandate this video is mandate video is literally gonna be buried between and gonna become an addendum on the crowdfunding video that I maybe do next week or this week before E3 I don't know. And literally, there is interesting because there will be news about crowdfunding on this fucking thing. Whatever I decide to call it. So, second part of the update. Look, this is gonna be one of my big endeavors, and I don't have the fuck of idea how I'm gonna do. I test the f way I would do with my follow up video like the follow live stream about the Bethesda stuff so I gonna try my best on do live commentary on E3 I fought and do last year but well I could not not watch some people that were doing the commentary so I said eh, whatever now I gonna try it's gonna be probably be a shit show. Nobody probably gonna be watching. I doubt. Like, I got two people on my last stream. And that's already fun enough. So. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna try do my best to live stream EA. Because EA on the, is on the 9th. Everything is starts on the 10th after that. It's... I'm gonna shove the fucking E3 schedule, but remember then EA decide to fuck off and do his own thing, so EA gonna have one on the 9th, a presentation on the 9th. That's the only kind of big addendum that you're gonna have on the schedule. Now, for videos that will be coming, I kind of have a problem with Doom, and I didn't discover a lot, like, after, because, well, allow me to say, I normally watch the raw video, then watch after editing, and then I say, fuck, it's n there's no way that YouTube gonna fuck that over. Well, YouTube did fuck that over. There's a lot of frame rate drops on the first two videos, and I didn't notice until someone told me that yeah amazing huh so that mean then I gonna literally have to kick doom back re-record the fucking thing hope I find a way to fix I don't know how because I don't know the problem and re-record first episode until like I don't know and what's gonna suck I gonna need to re-record the episode and try to upload and see how the fucking thing works. Okay. 
doing this out of the way, we're gonna be doing. Frostpunk. Frostpunk gonna be a fucking thing on the channel for I don't know how long time. Because, well. Uh, I still wanna do, uh. I don't know. Church of the Giant Fro of the Giant Furnace run. I want to finish the scenarios, and since you're gonna be hearing on the news, there will be stuff. Second, Moon Leader. I think it's that the name. I uh, again, it was by 12, 11 Bit Studios, so they are on a roll in my opinion. I kind of kind of have a little bit of a problem with that because well since I played that fucking thing early in the morning I mean like 4 or 5 I didn't notice I kind of noticed but I didn't think that would be a problem For some reason while I was playing the fucking thing Siri decides then I said to start playing Spotify. And Spotify, like, I was playing directly on my PC before recording. So, yeah. A larger amount of my fucking thing had music on it. Interesting enough, I wasn't hearing. It is, like, low enough, then probably YouTube copyright ID gonna take it, but not low enough so anyone would hear, it, maybe? I don't know. So, I scrap a part of the first, like, a part of the second episode and the entire third episode and that's not much. Literally, it's not too much. Now, I'm sitting on Vampire? I think it's that way. It's not vampire. It's vampire because it has a Y. And I don't know. I'm going to record the first half an hour. And decide if I'm going to do a let's play. Or if it's going to be just me playing on my own. Probably what's going to happen. And that's going to be it. So ladies and gentlemen. For the update part. It's over. Again. I gonna transform the shit show there was the crowdfund the mandate video on a crowdfunding video. I going to keep doing Frostpunk for as long as there is content and I in love of Eleven Bit Studios because there will be content for a long period of time to come yet. Vampire is an option and we're gonna try our best to do E3 coverage. And God, oh God, how this is not going to work a fucking bit. Now, for now on, if you want to, if you just came from update on the channel and I don't have the fuck of idea why you did that, well, here is where you can get out. Because now I'm going to try to talk a little bit about things that I want to talk, like, things that happens in the news. Then I want to talk about it, but they don't worth a fucking full game talk video because they don't have the fuck of a clue what the hell that series is about. I'm just shitting myself. I just shit talking myself while I'm doing that. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the first half of the video. So, right to the news Frostpunk 11 Beat Studio is gonna be releasing a Reasonable amount of DLC and the good news, it's all gonna be for free. During the year of 2018, probably a little bit to the beginning of 2019, let's give the a little bit of a window. They're gonna be releasing five new DLCs. Like some scenarios, some small additions to the game. And as I said, it will all be free. Let's give it a look. I'm gonna place the roadmap they release on Steam forums, their own forums, probably Twitter and other places. To give it a little bit of an idea what's going to be the roadmap. First, we're going to have the survival new mode. Survival is going to be an update who bring it more difficult to the game. And that's one. It's going to be coming out this month, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, out in June. And that's going to be running like the plague from it. Because I'm not 
Look, I'm enjoying the game on the normal diff code. Harder than that, it, there, the game's already is. It's gonna be probably a little bit too much for me. And I'm not gonna be able to finish. I'm enjoying my time. The second DLC is going to be people and automatons. There's a little bit of customization options to the game. For example, the ability to give names for buildings, the automatons, and your citizens. And execute the hor in horrible ways during utilizing your generator's team execution machine. Well, that sounds strange, but I'm totally for it. Third, Builder's DLC. It's going to be the big DLC they are saying. Not, I don't know if this is going to be the big buy, but I think it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a new scenario. I don't know if it's going to be uh, like the new home, or it's going to be in the ways of the, the Ark or the refugees. It's going to be a brand new scenario with its own history, in the same way as the Ark had, in the same way as the refugee got, and in the, probably the same way than whatever going to have. They were not going to spoil a lot, but look. If I could throw my two cents out of on this one, it would be very cool if we start with a normal to reasonable like temperature and we would have to construct the generator until the frost started hitting. So it would be a very interesting dynamic where we would have a little bit of time and we will have to prepare the city to when the frost starts coming in. So maybe we start with a like plus 20 plus 10 I don't know and we go and lower we lowering down from that and it will be a very interesting way and remember one of the things if the builders is you need to build generators you're not gonna be able to you utilize automatons you're not gonna have a lot of the steam hubs that would be a very interesting choice of how to shake up a little bit the strategy Although I would like a new strat like tech tree, I don't have the fuck of idea how I would do that. The fourth DLC is gonna be endurance. Endurance is gonna be their answer for what a lot of people want, a sandbox and endless mode. I don't know how the hell that's gonna be. It's gonna be keeping lowering down the temperature for X amount of time. If that's gonna be the thing or you're going to have more ways to heat up the fucking thing. There will be more generator powers. The f space that you would have, you would need, there would be very big. And an interesting thing could be is like the large storm that we get on the end of the first game, the end of the ending of the main campaign, a new home, would be very interesting if that would be seasonal. For example. After X amount of time, the Tempest would hit again. And you would have to do the whole preparations. And then you can reclaim the fucking thing and do it again. That would be a very interesting. Now, the last one they are going to be giving us for free on 2018. Beginning of 2019. Will be Winter Snapshots. And let me be one of the persons who admit it. God damn, Frostpunk looks great. It's a very, very gorgeous game. And they're gonna give us the ability to take screenshots, probably a little bit of video, and I don't know what more. A better control over how we're gonna manage screenshots and other things. Maybe some filters, filters allow us to create like a painting style filter. I don't know. To create amazing screenshots and photos from our brand new London and I'm very excited on of course they are not they're telling that the journey is not over and they will have a lot more planning to 2019 but one thing I have to say is I would hope an expansion and I will not deny that I would be very okay paying like a, if the game was 45 bucks so paying it 35 bucks for a whole expansion who would give a like two uh one more new whole big campaign and two or three more scenarios i would be down with 30 bucks would be a very okay-ish and i would be happy to help the developer at this moment the left beat studios is some people who did two games and i very enjoy 
they are in the heat to be the to have the third game with Moon Leader, but this War of Mine and Frostpunk, they are very interesting games. And I will be keeping playing Frostpunk, and you're probably gonna be seeing me doing the Church of the Giant Furnace on the next playthrough after I finish the arc. Paradox Entertainment end up acquiring Hairbring Studios, and by the meaning of this video, I'm gonna be calling it HBS because normally I tend to mix up the schemes for studios. So, as almost almost every news, this has its good and its bad side. And well, let's start for the good side. HBS has claim in many of the times during mostly on the development of Battletech then the way they do things with only one project and crowdfunding can really affect the way they are working on their project it's not healthy for the company only working one thing at a time but the way they doing things right now that was the only way with paradox backing the up they may be able to work on they may, may be able to expand, work on more projects, hire more people, and juggle a little bit more than they were doing before. Not only that, but with Paradox, they can get their hands on maybe some different licenses. If I remember correctly, Paradox ended up acquiring the license for Vampire, Vampire the Masquerade, and Werewolf Apocalypse, and all the Storyteller line of RPGs, tabletop RPGs. And as we saw with Shadowrun Returns, Shadowrun da Dragonfall and Hong Kong, HBS has a very good capability of bringing the tabletop to the PC market. Although for Battletech, my jury is not out yet and mostly because the bad side of this news. First, Paradox is not has the best DLC policy. What Paradox normally do with many of their titles, take that for CK2, EU4, or others for the same line, they take an expansion, chop the expansion in a lot of small bite size or muse size DLCs and sell it to you. People will claim to, well, that's better because you can choose the pieces of the expansion than you want to buy. But in reality, that's worse because if you really want the entire content, you end up paying more. And let's not deny, this is a little bit off-putting to the latecomers to the game. They will literally see a page, a Steam page that has like 15, 20, 30 DLCs. And the list goes on. I'm not gonna d deny, but Paradox is trying to be a little bit more tame with their DLC, but still, the their problem is there. Stellaris created a problem, create a very interesting problem when during I can't remember if it was during the period of synthet synthetic dawn or apocalypse, they had to take a picture there was from the uh, expansion Utopia and bring back to the game because if not they was simply doing one of the most dickish moves to access a part of the expansion and you just bought it you would have to buy another expansion you see it's that some kinds of problem than this larger amount of content division this large amount of Chopping up DLC in, var in a larger amount of parts create. Not only that, by the way they literally drag the life of a title can create problems as we have with Stellaris 2.0 where a larger amount of the gameplay did change and not a lot of people enjoy it. There was a lot of people who did, there was a lot of people who didn't. And question marks come, wouldn't it be better to release Stellaris 2? In that point, with the fact that we to the new chains and things like that, maybe. But that is what to be seen, and that's how we're gonna see 
how things are handled with Battletech. And to be honest, let's not remind it. Then there is other games from third party. Let's go second part developers like Herbring Studio became. Then end up falling to the same. Uh, City Skylines has a very larger amount of DLC and the catalog of DLC just keep rising. Yes, they still get free updates and sometimes bring life to the game. But as I said, sometimes end up creating the problem as Stellaris 2.0. So... Well, as I said, problems and problems. Battletech, as I said, I'm kind of a new to the franchise, but I can see the way they could monetize. For example, one of the features that was... I don't know if the feature was scrapped or entirely, or if it was just pushed back from the after-release. They would probably literally take the legendary mech waters for what I understood mech waters that had permanent background and there was in the lore during the period of time and they would place on the game they could simply take the this mech water uh, a mech then he used a lot some other two variants uh, a, some other two weapons or variants and shove in the game and sell has a 25 left, 25, no, if they sell for 25, that would be too much. Like, sell for 99 bucks, from 9 bucks and 9 cents, and 99 cents, almost 10 bucks, 5 bucks, I don't know. Maybe they will for, to, like, hold on the bad rap than that would give us initially, today initially. For the people who backed up the game, they would give, like, X amount of keys for this X amount of legendary packs and things like that. And they keep they can keep selling these small things and then giving updates to give you, I don't know, some more random events during the gameplay and after a while more mech packs, more legendary mech waters, more a lot the fact is with Solaris to each big expansion then from like each big patch content patch then they have you can expect there will be a expansion glued in and a part of that patch would be only significant would be only available for the people who paid sometimes the AI has the things who are on the expansion but I doubt it that can be done on Battletech without breaking completely the balance of the game. Because since the game is totally great around the balance of salvage. And I don't know. In the end they may be uh, releasing a second campaign. A third campaign. Which would not be the best idea. For example if the engines start to getting like bogged down bloated they find some problems with the engine then it's better to literally scrap and start it from scratch with upgrade engine upgrade coding upgrade and whatever products literally shows the shows their hand and normally forces you to keep with the same engine in a, some way who appears to be a court of uh, cutting the budget but again, it remains to be seen. But one of the worst things I see is feedback. When the Kickstarter happens, a lot of feedback is required. A lot of people, when feedback and the backer and the community is capable of giving, like, it's one of the most important things. And Herbert's 2 HBS was a very good on maintaining that now we saw a little bit of this already like paradox affecting that during this development I know some people will say this is literally speculation and I'm not gonna take your like I not say I'm wrong you're wrong about but is 
you can see that. Paradox literally tied down a little bit and forced more the release date. And for that reason, I can believe in some options for, for example, customization for pilots and your commander. Not your commander, for pilots in general, was cut down for later date. While that was something that was literally shown to be like hyped during the entire game. And if you ask me, then if you think that I'm literally hitting the same key, I will hit that key for as long as I live because they hyped that feature into the last, like every time in every live, live stream, this question was asked. They said then you would be available to do that. And they didn't, like, they didn't come clean and they didn't say on live stream or on Steam forums, hey, there will, this is not gonna be coming out, we will delay that. And for people who say, well, they have the official Paradox forums, look, I hate the Paradox forums. For most of it's like puff pieces and people just complain. There's not much complaint. I do believe the Steam forums in many and many ways are more raw. And they contain a little bit more of criticism than Paradox 1 will have. They probably are a heavily moderate. So that would be. So that's my news for the Battletech. I'm gonna be touching on one more news. Well, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more in depth about this on my on the my video about crowdfunding, but I want to little to touch that. Star Citizen, 27k ship fleet sale. Yeah, that's a thing. Cloud Imperium is making us is making a sale of a 27k fleet. Let that sink in. They are selling 27k on their ships on their game store. Look, in my opinion, Star Citizen already gone off the rails a lot, like a year or two ago. But fuck. And if the fact in a 20 Seven. Remember, twenty-seven k, the price of a fucking car, is not enough. You already had to spend one k on the game to even be able to see that fucking thing. Now let's allow me to ask a question: Is a star citizen pay to win? I know the game is not even out yet, so we cannot do this judgment. But fuck, mate. You can be flying a larger planet destroyer, like the Eclipse Star Destroyer equivalent on that game. Because you literally place a payment like a... The mortgage of your house in the fucking game. And I can be flying my, like, lonely fighter. Do you fucking have, think I have a chance? No, I don't. Well, that's just what I want to tell right now, from now. But I'm gonna be touching a little bit better on a video about crowdfunding in general. Because Star Citizen is the crown jewel of crowdfunding. And let's not remind me, then i placing my neck on the fucking chopping block because fucking hell, Star Citizen community is like a fucking cult. And they will sacrifice you from their god. This was the video, ladies and gentlemen. So, thank you for watching. And as always, there will be other channels and some links on the description for you to check it out. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like. And if you want to see what comes next, please do a subscribe. 
As always, I thank you for watching and see you next video.